Hey everyone, sorry we're rolling a little bit late. It's one of those days when uh, things happen and it's fun. So yeah, here we are. Uh, it's Tuesday, a week before the election. Who's excited to be done with that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, here we are. We are in 1 Corinthians. We're chapter 1 and we're going to be doing verses 18 through 31. So it's a little bit bigger section, but we'll kind of run through it. And uh, yeah, so again, I hope everybody's doing okay, staying safe. And uh, case numbers are really rising in the county. I know today the infection rates are at 59.7. So that's, we have uh, definitely, uh, we're spiking. So again, be extra cautious, wear your masks, avoid any kind of in-person gatherings from outside your kind of house bubble like I mean even if even if that's like your family I know we all want to see our family but maybe now's the time to go back to a little distance with that but uh yeah so I mean we're hitting we're hitting a rough spot where it's it's become real and again continued prayers for for Tom Fisk and for his family um he's really he's really battling hard and so yeah keep them in your prayers but let's jump in to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 through 31. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So great. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greek desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are both who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. I know you've heard me talk about this before, and this is kind of Paul's point here, is it's how the world appears to work isn't how God works. Like God goes outside of what you would think would be the norm, that, that it may seem foolish uh, for the world, that, that a sacrifice, that a death was needed to save everyone. So that's just kind of what Paul is talking about when he talks about foolishness and wisdom. It's like, because the world doesn't get it. Like, I mean, this is counterintuitive uh, stuff. This It doesn't make sense. But it's amazing, and that's what God does. So consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you are wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who will become for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. I'm sorry, there's actually a little uh, kind of note in my in my study Bible about this part of the section. So I just want to read this real quick. It says, Paul contrasts God's wisdom shown in the foolishness of the cross with human wisdom. Sophia meant two different things to ancient Greeks. Sophia is actually the wisdom, was translated wisdom. Among philosophers, particularly Stoics, it meant knowledge of the world as a perfect system of cause and effect. To be wise was to know that everything happened for a reason and everything is just as it should be. To think otherwise insults the great cause of all things, God. The rich and powerful favored Stoic ideas about cosmic order because those ideas preserved the social order. If Christ crucified is the power of God and the wisdom of God, however, then the force that holds the universe together is not the rule of superiors over inferiors, but the love that joyfully bears the burdens of others. Seeing God in Christ crucified means we can no longer use God to justify hierarchy and oppression. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Crazy stuff. Like Paul, Paul's just, he's genius. Obviously, he's an apostle, but just 
just the way he argues things. I mean, sometimes he can go over your head. Sometimes you're just like, wow, you could have just said, God doesn't work how we expect instead of this four sentences. So good. But you would miss the beauty. You would miss some of the flow and some of the, all that, all that goodness that comes from Paul, that depth that just kind of, he just he takes you, kind of shakes you up a little bit and says, okay, how you feel now? So, um, okay, well, let's close with a word of prayer. It's here. So good gracious God, again, just be with Tom and his family with Kathy, with the boys. Just show them your comfort, your love. Just help us to be vigilant. I know we want to let, let up our guard. We're frustrated. We want to say we're done, but help us to stay the course and to be safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, take care, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.